Hey guys! So I was doing my makeup this morning, getting ready to film a bunch of videos, as I do, and I found myself on the corner of the internet going down a rabbit hole all about entitled influences and cancellation. And in this particular case, the videos I was watching were discussing a TikTok superstar called Michaela Naguera and the rather entitled comments she made in regards to her job as an influencer. So me, as I do, I went deep down the rabbit hole. Like once I started watching one video, I was led into the other video and then I was led into the other video and before I knew it I was like consumed by this drama and I, I formed some opinions and I figured since I'm already sat here filming and I've got my makeup on and I'm already in front of the camera I may as well make a video on the subject because I do have a few thoughts and I feel like it's something that we're seeing happen again and again more recently where an influencer will make some totally tone-deaf comments the internet then goes wild and cancels said influencer ruining their career and bringing them down a peg or two which makes internet happy now I would love to hear you guys' opinions on this subject in the comments below because let's be real I'm six months pregnant it's Saturday night I don't have a lot to be at. <laughs> I quite frankly would love to spend this rainy Saturday evening chatting to my subscribers in the comments about just random stuff. So grab yourself a cup of tea, let's get comfy and let's chat. So as it appears to me, the internet is currently going bananas over the TikTok influencer Michaela Naguera, who made a video essentially complaining about her job as an influencer and whinging about how hard it is and that people should try being an influencer for a day and essentially they wouldn't be able to hack it. Here is the clip that I've seen plastered all over the interwebs today for context. I literally just finished work and it's 519. Try being an influencer for a day. Try it. Because the people who say it's easy are so far out of their minds, try it for a day. It is not for everybody. In fact, it's for a very small handful of people who can actually do this job. Because it's absolutely f***ing insane. So let's quickly jump backwards for a second for my subs who, like me, live under a rock and aren't on TikTok. Guys, I am from the MySpace generation. There is not a hope in hell that I'm going to get TikTok. I don't even understand the damn app. So for those of you in my generation who, like me, may not know who Michaela Naguera is, she is a TikTok influencer with over 13 million followers. Can you guys believe that? 13, over 13 million followers on TikTok. That is a load of people and over 2 million followers on Instagram and she's got over 100k on YouTube as well so the girl's influence is absolutely mind staggeringly mind blowing huge now you best believe that when an influencer has that kind of influence and that kind of amount of followers they can charge pretty much whatever they want from brands in order to produce content. Now, there was an email leaked a while ago that allegedly said that Michaela charges $85,000 for a shout out on her Instagram. I don't know if that's true or false. I just saw it on one of these videos that I was watching. However, as a content creator myself, it wouldn't surprise me if she was able to charge that kind of money. In fact, to be honest, I think Michaela is probably able to charge way more than that now because her influence and her followers have grown so massively, like 13 million people. That is a lot of eyes on your product if you are a brand and you best believe that they will pay pretty much anything you ask. Now, Michaela has also apparently recently purchased a house that was over $2 million and she's only 24. So that tells you the kind of money that she is able to earn right now from her job as an influencer. She also doesn't seem to hide the fact that she's earning good money because she is often on TikTok and social media showing off her new designer purchases like new Chanel handbags, other designer handbags, more designer handbags. And here, oh, for me, I had a real flash. Here it is. And here's the bag. The and some of these designer handbags would cost more than what most people would make in a month. That's a lot of money. So people are understandably pissed that Michaela has the nerve to come onto her socials and complain about her job as an influencer and whinge about how hard it is. It certainly does seem very tone deaf to come onto social media and whinge about how difficult your job is as an influencer when the last two years have seen lockdowns, shutdowns, people getting seriously ill, losing their livelihoods, struggling to keep a roof over their heads, let alone put food on the table for their kids. It's like, girl, read the room. Not to mention this clip is apparently taken from a year ago, which is when, I don't know about you guys, but in my country, lockdowns were still happening. People were still losing their jobs. What a privileged time to 
to be an influencer who gets to work from the safety and comfort of your own home, earning truckloads of money. It honestly does seem very tone deaf to have the nerve to whinge about it. So honestly, I can understand why people are annoyed. However, <laughs> entitled influencers are nothing new. Michaela is not the only influencer who feels that her job influencing is difficult and hard work. UK influencer Molly May came under fire for a similar kind of attitude a few months ago where Molly May went on an interview and said that basically everybody has the same 24 hours in the day as her and nobody has any excuse really to not have achieved the things that she has achieved. Beyonce has the same 24 hours in a day that, that we do and I just mm. think like you, you're given one life and it's down to you what you do with it like you can literally go in any direction and when I've spoken about that before in the past I have been slammed a little bit with people saying you know like it's easy for you to say that you know you've grown up and you've not grown up in poverty you've not grown up you know with major money struggles so for you to sit there and say that we will have the same 24 hours in a day is not correct and I'm like but technically what I'm saying is correct we we do so I understand that obviously we all have different backgrounds and we're all raised in different ways and we do have different financial situations but I think if you want something enough you can achieve it and it just depends to what lengths you want to go to get where you want to be in the future and I'll go to any lengths. Like, I, I've worked my absolute arse off to get where I am now. Of course, the internet blew up at that as well. People were saying that she needed to check her privilege, that she was entitled, that she didn't deserve her success. And I have to admit, I do have a soft spot for Molly Mae. I think she's a really sweet girl. I don't think she meant her statement in the way it came across. I think she was trying to be motivational and say that, like, if she could do it, anyone can do it. And it blew up into something that it wasn't really meant to be just my personal opinion. And considering that my job is also social media, like I've been doing this as my full-time job now for I think the last seven or eight years, which is a long time, I can kind of see, kind of see where Michaela is coming from. So the time of the work I do is essentially the same as having a full-time job, if not a little bit more. So for the videos that I make on YouTube, it takes me at least two days to sit down and plan and research and write my little essay that I write before I film each video. It takes me a long time. It takes me one day to set up and film the video and then it will take me minimum two days to edit said video. So essentially it'll take me one whole week to create one video that I then put up on YouTube. So is it a lot of work? Honestly, I think so, yes. Is it hard work? No. I am not a neurosurgeon. I am not a paramedic. I'm not a minor. I'm not a cleaner. I'm not a nurse. I don't think that I could honestly sit here and claim that my work is hard because it isn't. Does it take a lot of time? Yes. Does it get tedious? Yes. Sometimes I get so sick of staring at myself on the computer screen and listening to myself when I'm editing myself. I'm like, I never want to see or hear myself ever again. <laughs> I would never ever complain about doing this as my job or claim that it is hard or that other people couldn't do it. I am so blessed blessed that I even get to call this my job. Now admittedly I might complain when I have spent one or two weeks working on a video solidly and then when I put it up on YouTube for my subscribers to watch YouTube automatically demonetizes, age restricts and essentially bans my video for no real reason. That I get really really frustrated by because I'm like I just wasted a whole week of my life on that and now no one's gonna see it. I am still ultimately aware that I am beyond blessed that I get to call being an influencer, being a content creator, my job. I think the problem is is that this new wave of influencers are really really young. Michaela I think is only 24. That is so young. Molly May is a similar age. So many of these new TikTok influencers are so young. They don't really know what the real world is about just yet for the most part. And for a lot of them, they may have never ever had a real regular job like influencing may be the only job that they've ever had. And so they don't really have anything to compare it to. And therefore they think because they're putting in hours that that equals hard work. They have probably never experienced the harsh reality of having to be at work at a certain time, stay at work until a certain time, earn a certain amount of money, answer to somebody else because you have a boss, just to pay rent or put food on the table. And for those of us who are a bit older and apparently a bit wiser, we kind of know this reality because we've lived it. I saw this firsthand because my mum raised me as a single mum until she met my stepdad because my biological father refused to acknowledge my existence until I was 21. My mum not only worked pretty much full-time hours 
hours whilst raising me, but she was also studying at university to become a teacher. And so every night when I was trying to sleep, I would hear my mum tapping away at her computer. Like this is the nineties. I'm talking these like, you know, those super old blocky computers doing her essays, doing her studying. And she managed all of that whilst looking after me with very little help. So I saw firsthand that sometimes you have to sacrifice things. Sometimes you have to work your ass off if you want to get anywhere in life. So when I was 15, I was out working after school, two jobs in a chemist and a restaurant. As soon as I left school, I went straight into full-time work and I have worked full-time until I managed to make this my career. I counted. I have had 11 jobs, not including this, in my lifetime. So I, for one, would never, ever, ever take doing this as my job for granted because I know how lucky I am. Now, to put Michaela's complaining about being an influencer into proper context, apparently she was responding to a comment which basically said that she should try working a nine to five, insinuating that her job as an influencer was easy or not a real job. So Michaela, understandably, was pissed off at that comment and hit back at it in a way that she authentically felt at the time. All right, we got Caesar salad with a little bit of Caesar dressing. You know, I'm feeling like an asshole today, so um, I'm going to clap back at people because I'm tired. I'm so tired. Every single day, I get up at 6 a.m. I spend about five to six hours filming video content that ranges from three to four videos, and I spend a few hours editing that video content. Then I have to work on my other social media profiles, whatever it may be, Instagram, whatever. It's f***ing marketing. Then I'm in meetings from 12 to 5. I literally just finished work and it's 519. Try being an influencer for a day. Try it. Because the people who say it's easy are so far out of their minds. Try it for a day. It is not for everybody. In fact, it's for a very small handful of people who can actually do this job. Because it's absolutely f***ing insane. You do not want to have this job. I'm just saying. Does that make her attitude any less entitled? In my opinion, no, but I can understand where she was coming from. I think that Michaela would probably benefit from putting herself in the shoes of someone like a nurse or a midwife or a doctor or a shift worker who is working all the hours under the sun, sometimes for minimum wage, might make her appreciate then the job that she does have as an influencer. But at the same time, I can totally empathize with her. Having thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people come at you all at once for something that you said, or did is terrifying. And when you already suffer with your mental health, as Michaela does, she's been very open about the fact that she has suffered with depression in her life, then having social media as your job can be really hard. Really hard to handle, I should say, from a mental health perspective. And I totally feel her on that. I suffer really badly, not with depression, but with anxiety. I've been an anxious person since something triggered me when I was a child, and I've never really been the same since. And having social media as my job, I could read like 20 really kind comments and I'm like, oh, that's so nice. And then I'll read one comment lightly criticizing me as they have the right to do. And it will totally strike me in my heart. And I will think and obsess over that one comment for the rest of the day, sometimes the next day, sometimes the next day. And it will make me feel so anxious. And I'll be like, am I an asshole? Am I wrong? Do I have any right to talk on anything? I have a tendency to take it really badly. When you're already a person who has a tendency to become anxious or depressed, being an influencer or having social media as your job can be really, really tough. It is not normal for a human being to have to take on the negative opinions of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, like what they think about you. Do you know what I mean? In real life, before the internet was ever a thing, if somebody had a problem with you, it would usually be someone that you know in real life and it would just be one person or a handful of people and you, you could, for the most part, deal with that. But when you're an influencer or social media is your job and you say or do something that pisses people off and you have like an army of people coming after you, that is so scary. Charlotte Dobre did a video that I watched on this this morning, which I thought really put it into perspective. She called it mass bullying. <laughs> And I was like, Ooh, that sounds so dramatic, but it's kind of true. I personally think, and please tell me guys what you think in the comments down below. My personal stance on this is that mass bullying or like canceling an influencer can be really dangerous behavior. And I get it, I do. When you're annoyed with someone, 
especially an influencer who, for the most part, tends to be in a position of privilege and power, you kind of want them to know. But I also think that it's easy to forget that these influencers at the end of the day, like strip away their privilege, strip away their power, strip away the, the fame and the money and the followers. They are just normal, real people with their own insecurities and their own life struggles. And having like a horde of people coming after them for something they said or did, can potentially have really dangerous consequences. When you strip all the influencer privileges of Michaela back, she just comes across to me as a really friendly, really outgoing, a really talented young woman who has worked her butt off and made something of herself. And honestly, good for her. I do feel like sometimes on the internet, people can like search for things to get angry about and then it kind of turns into a witch hunt. Now I do understand that some influencers have done horrendously atrocious things or said utterly malicious things and they have for a time been cancelled and personally I don't see anything wrong with holding these people accountable for what they have done or said if it's really really bad however when it comes to Michaela the only crime she has committed is being entitled and complaining about her job as an influencer which was daft like when I watched that clip I was like surely she's being sarcastic She's got to be being sarcastic here. She wasn't. And I was like, honestly, I was gobsmacked. I was like, jeepers. <laughs> what made her think that coming on camera and complaining about being an influencer like that was ever going to go down well? Surely common sense would tell you that that is not going to go down well. But that is genuinely how she felt at the time. Does it make her a bad person? No, I think it was a daft thing to say, but I don't think she's a bad person. I don't think she deserves a witch hunt. Now, please guys, tell me at this point what you think in the comments down below, because I know I'm gonna have a lot of differing opinions. I'm gonna have people calling me out for going too easy on her. I'll have people calling me out for even making this video in the first place. I'll have people calling me out for being too hard on her. The way I see it is that we all need to be a little bit more empathetic. So the internet as a whole needs to have more empathy for people and these influencers who are in these like incredibly privileged positions of fame and wealth and power need to have empathy and realize how bloody lucky they are to be there. There is a lot more that I could say on this subject, but I'm probably just going to end up rambling and repeating myself because there really isn't too much more to say on this subject. I just end up talking a lot. So I'm going to go and finish my now cold cup of tea. I'm going to put this video up online and I look forward to chatting to you guys in the comments. I love your guts. Bye. Enjoy your weekend.